All right, let's continue our discussion with a uh, talk about the lead exam content. Uh, they're going to ask you questions in four general areas, uh, the credit intents and requirements, the project and team coordination, implementation of the lead process itself, and knowledge to verify, participate in, and perform technical analysis required for lead, lead credits. All right, knowledge of lead credit intents and requirements. It's memorizing the stuff, the facts, the figures, the percentages. Uh, that, that's all it is. That's, that's all I can say. It's memorizing the stuff that's in there. Okay? Um, you need to establish a certain level of knowledge for the lead credit intents. Now, a credit intent is what's our overlying purpose for this particular credit. Like, think of this as like our, our, our lofty goal. The requirements are the actual stuff you have to do and prove that you've done to get that. And that's where we get our percentages and facts and figures in. All right? Many people get so bogged down about memorizing credit intents and requirements, though, that they forget the other parts of the exam. Now, coordination of project team. A fairly legitimate lead uh, exam question would be which of the following credits would the mechanical engineer most likely do the documentation for? Right? Who would be responsible for this credit and give you a choice of engineer, architect, owner, project, you know, construction, uh, uh, general contractor rather. All right? Managing the team itself, who is doing what, is also fair game type of, type of question. And throughout these slides, I've tried to list them to give you an idea of who, who's usually in charge of providing the documentation for this, uh, um, for, this <clears throat> for individual credits. Also, they want to identify opportunities for integrated design. In other words, if there are multiple disciplines that are affected by one strategy, they would expect you to know that as well. Identify standards that support, hold on a second, let me go back to that. Identify standards that support lead credits. A reference standard. In other words, lead doesn't tell you what the minimum energy performance is for a building. It gives you a reference to an ASHRAE standard that does. Lead doesn't tell you, all right, how much ventilation air do we need to bring into a building? Lead gives you a reference to a different standard that does. This book, as thick as it is, does not even come close to containing all the reference materials that you need to design a lead building. Not even close. If you were to put all those standards together and stack up to the ceiling, right? Lead, in a lot of cases, is just compiling all of this stuff. And I'll give you some examples of that as, as we go through the individual credits. All right, implementation of the lead process. How do you register a project? What? are you supposed to do? How do you manage the process itself? This is the online part that I, that, I, that I said is pretty easy to get, but many people miss because they don't spend any time looking at the website. And we'll do that later in this class. Okay? But, this is, but this is the how do we manage the process. Also an important part here. Knowledge of credit interpretation rulings. Hold on a second. Right here, credit interpretation rulings. Circle, highlight, star that, whatever you got to do. What a credit interpretation ruling is, think of it as a RFI for lead. This is where you say, hey, I've got a question. And you, and you, and you write into U.S. Green Building Council. And you say, if we, if we dig up a bunch of rock and we reuse that on site for landscaping, does that constitute recycling? What do you think? Aaron, what do you think? Is that recycling? Uh, sure. Sure? Yes or no? Yes. Are you really convinced it is? Uh, not completely. Not completely. It, does anyone else have any differing opinions? You think, yeah, that's not really recycling. Anyone? Could it go either way? I mean, come on, recycling. Nobody was using that rock before you dug it out of the ground. Okay, but you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if this applies. 
here's the credit interpretation ruling. Someone actually did this, by the way. They wrote in, contractors said, hey, we want to use this for, for um, um, recycled content. And so they, they ask, they write in lead, does this meet the criteria for recycled content? And they, they, they file this. This is done online on the website later in the class. I'll, I'll show you where, where these are. Um, but they write in and they say, okay, um, you know, does the rock that we dug out of the ground classify for recycled content? In this particular case, they actually said, no, that's not recycled. Right? No one was throwing it away until you started building your building doesn't meet the, the intent of recycled. But what they did say, though, however, is that this could apply towards regional materials. There is a credit in here if you, if you have a certain percentage of your materials that are regional. In other words, they are harvested and manufactured within a certain radius of the, of the job site. All right? That counts for regional materials. What they said is, no, this isn't recycling, but you can use it for regional materials. Now, in their response, when they write that down, the credit interpretation ruling is like case law. Everyone on any project from now on can look at that credit interpretation ruling. Aaron, let's say that you asked this question, all right? And Marco has a project later, a year later, and he says, hey, I got some rock that I'm digging up out of the ground. I wonder if that would apply towards something. If you look it up, you could look this up and say, well, they gave Aaron permission to use this and count it towards regional materials. Thus, everyone from now on can use that same interpretation ruling. You know, you do not have to ask the question again. It sets a precedent like case law. Now, this is important because credit interpretation rulings are the only source. Just because you read about some strategy in some green build magazine or, you know, a uh, glossy literature that some that some uh, other construction company put out those aren't applicable that's not what what Green, USGBC would constitute definitive if you want a definitive answer on whether or not a strategy meets the requirements it has to be done through credit interpretation rulings is everyone clear on that the purpose of credit interpretation rulings i want to say that there is a fee associated with this i think it's like $200 a question don't laugh. Green USGBC is a not-for-profit organization. All right. I know the, the, the laughter probably didn't come through the mic here. These guys are sitting here chuckling. Okay. But what that does is, though, I do understand their point. They don't want, thou you know, rather than someone checking credit interpretation rulings, they're just asking the qu same question again and again and again. All right. That's, that's the intent here. So credit interpretation rulings, very important, not just for the exam, but also for making your life a little bit easier when it comes to managing the process. All right, technical analysis. Perform technical analysis to verify compliance. The lead exam is not going to have you do an energy calculation. They're not going to have you do a lighting calculation. They're not going to have you do a plumbing calculation. It's multiple choice. All right. Now, what they could ask you, though, is which of the following things would you need to know to do the plumbing calculation and give you a list of things. That's the level of knowledge requirement on the exams, or at least it always has been in the past. You're not going to do the calculation on the test, but you're going to say, ah, I need to know the following things out of this list to perform a calculation. That's the level of knowledge that you need to have as far as calculations go. And most credits, I think it's safe to say most credits require some type of calculation whether it's the percentage of money spent on recycled content or the percentage of, of construction waste that's being recycled. You know, there's some type of calculation involved in those and, it will, and the exam will expect you to know what, you have, what goes into performing that calculation. All right, uh, with that in mind, we're going to get to sustainable sites.